Hey there, ladies, gentlemen, and llamas. I am back. And we're going to do a restoration project today. Should be a lot of fun. So this is an out-of-production, bench-made Model 737 aileron. And that's, you know, if you know your aircraft, uh, Boeing 737, Model 737, the aileron. It's an important part of an airplane. Uh, this is a bench-made knife that honestly was was not very popular um it came and went relatively quickly but it's actually a very interesting design it's got a it's got a comfortable handle g10 scales it's got a nice big s30v stainless steel blade very good steel um, as for why this you know had such a short life um in the benchmade lineup i don't know Honestly, um, just was not that popular a knife. It's part of the black class, the you know ta tactical benchmade class. This came to me from a viewer of the channel. Um, now the backstory of it, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. You can take a look. You can see there's a lot of wear on this G10 on both sides. We've actually got some some chipping and pitting in the blade. The blade finish itself is pretty good. The stone wash really hides a lot of the wear on the blade um, so really what we need to do is just work on restoring that that nice cutting edge and we're going to enlist the help of a good friend dave so we're going to have him work on renewing and actually going a step beyond not only is, is his work going to help us clean up this edge but he's going to make it way better and brighter than it ever was before and in the shop itself, I'm going to work on cleaning up these scales. I'm going to actually, uh, we're not just going to restore them to the original black. We're going to take a step further with some Cerakote. And we're going to we're gonna give them a finish that no one else has. Um, I've already gotten in touch with Benchmade. Um, let them know that I have this old knife and I am in need of a clip and, and clip screws for it. Because as you can see, we're missing one screw and we're missing the clip. Um, Benchmade is really great about helping you. Basically, the only thing you can't buy from them outright is uh, a new blade. Um, you can, I mean, you can purchase a blade, but you have to send it in. So we've got the new clip on the way, but we're gonna we're gonna take that. We're gonna we're gonna redo all the hardware. Um, we're gonna take the whole thing apart, including the access lock. Um, we're gonna we're gonna redo this whole thing and give it a whole new look. So not only are we going to redo this, but we're going to we're going to give it a very unique look in the end because that's what we do. So the first step is going to be disassembling this whole thing, and uh, it, I mean it shouldn't be too hard. It also is probably not that much fun to watch. T6 is usually the the magic size for most of the screws on most bench mains including frame, clip, and other assorted. And usually a 9 to 10 for the pivot. So these frame screws look like they're in pretty good shape. They're all going to get sandblasted anyway so that we can uh, coat them in... Ooh, that one's a little sticky. But you can see they're very dirty and gross, so they'll need to be thoroughly cleaned off. I'm hoping I get this one out, yeah? Yeah, okay, fortunately, yeah, standard, you'll notice, oops, that's magnetic. The size of the screws are just a little bit different, so I'll be able to tell them apart. And this comes apart very easily, just two frame screws. And now, let's look for, we'll go with the 9 first. Go the 10 actually, see if that fits a little bit better in there. Yeah, perfect. Oh, okay. I feel like this has been taken apart before. Everything is just very loose there. I should be able to just lift that up. And yeah, that's dirty. That milling out is for the Omega Springs to function right there. There goes an ant. What are you doing there, Ant? All right, he got away. And we should be able to 
push that pivot right out. We've got one bronze washer. The other one's held up in there. We'll get it out. Well, it's, it's sticky. It's stuck right to the to the liner. Ooh, look at that filth. So that's gonna need to all be cleaned. There's our blade. Um, now, this can be a little tricky sometimes, and um, I'm actually just going to use a little tool. You can do this with fingernails or whatever, but all you got to do is gently lift the Omega spring out of that little socket. There you go. And, ooh, yeah, this really needs to be cleaned. Slide the access lock out that comes free. We're actually going to need to separate the Omega Springs. See how there's that little pin that lets you know what side they go back on. A lot of people talk about breaking Omega Springs. I have had so many access, I, I have in my collection so many access lock knives, I've never broken an Omega Spring. And now, this is our stop pin for the blade and our two barrel spacers. And what is up with, there we go. Now we can remove that. And yeah, so we're just gonna clean the liners off real good. I don't think we're going to do anything to them. We're gonna leave them black, but we are also gonna have to clean off all this. We're gonna put all of this hardware in a little plastic storage box so we don't lose anything. We're gonna put all of our bits away so we don't lose any of them, because that would be terrible. It's a very nice set. and. Uh, we will continue out on the shop floor where we can start working all this. Okay, so um, everything is in this little uh, mixing cup. I've just got a mix of simple green and uh, warm water. The exact ratio, I don't know, I just kind of eyeballed it. Uh, but I'm going to let everything soak. Everything's in here minus the Omega Springs. So I'm going to let the simple green um, work and kind of release the gook. I'm gonna take a nice soft toothbrush, scrub everything down. Uh, anything that still needs a little bit, I'll hit with just a little bit of like denatured alcohol or acetone. I just wanna be gentle with this right now um, and get it all clean. And then we'll go to the next step, which is to um, hit some of, the, some of the pieces at the sandblaster, which you'll see shortly. And I will be back. the shop back home in the quietness here reconditioning the washers is, is pretty easy what we're gonna do is we're just gonna buff them up on some very very high grit sanding pads here um, now the this specific grit doesn't doesn't matter that much um, but you do want to do very high grit you want to do above 2500 because we're not looking to sand these things down we're looking to just give them a little bit of a polish so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wet down this one um, and I like these nice foamy pads here and we're just going to start to polish away the, the kind of the surface layer of the, the wear and tear there. And you can see it's already starting to show us a nice bright shiny finish. We don't want to remove material from the actual washer because that can change the tolerances in the knife. We just want to buff up and get rid of that surface layer of grossness there, right? So just a little bit more till this has a nice even shine. And I do the, the wet sanding on it um, just to keep it nice and light. And 
that for me that right there is is good enough because um, what we're going to do next is we're going to take some flits metal polish and some polishing compound and we're going to give it one more layer of polish on there and it's actually going to be a little bit shinier and smoother than it would have been originally so a little bit more on this side and maybe just a little bit tiny more here Just nice, even pressure, not not pushing down into it. I'm just holding it in place as I buff it up on this pad. Yeah, and that'll work. It's a nice, smooth, shiny phosphor bronze washer compared to the other one in there. All right, so do that for this one now. While we're waiting to get the blade back from its refinishing, might as well start the reassembly process here. Just see how everything's going to look when it's all finished. So we start by removing the tape, the high temperature tape that we masked things off with. It's still on there. And that's gonna reveal the original metal that we left underneath here. And it is still in the same condition. And we can, um, you'll see how that's just kind of totally unfinished there. It's got the original markings from where it has moved around we can buff that up a little bit as well with some flits but that has broken in um, naturally with the knife itself we have here our markings on the axis lock where it has traveled in the grooves here and on the pivot here uh, where it's kind of used to sitting so we can just sort of leave that alone that's the only thing that we masked off so we really don't need to do anything else um, short of reattaching our omega springs making sure that this little this little pin faces in when we attach them up here oops so so there we go first step to making sure we have this assembled correctly, we need to get these pins. Here's the stop pin. We've got one of the barrel spacers. You'll notice it's it's D-shaped, not circular. So we got to get that um, little cutout positioned just right, and then the rear one also positioned just right. Okay. And now I'm making sure that. We're putting the, the wear areas where we know the, the washers were sitting towards the inside. Now that we've got that on, we can take our reassembled axis lock and slide it in. Now if you try to put the axis lock on first, you can do it. And I put it in backwards, oops, because the Omega Springs need to point towards the rear. If you see what I'm talking about. Um, but so you can you can try to assemble it with the axis lock in first it's just going to be a little more challenging for you to get everything fit in place now most bench made axis lock knives have little tiny holes drilled for these pins to fit in this one does not they just sort of fit with tension in there which is interesting and odd but our axis lock still works now this is convenient because this holds this whole assembly in place now by tension as we fit everything else on um, so here's that milled cutout which fits over the spring and these screws are all exactly the same so we'll just take one in and we're not gonna we're just gonna put it in to hold it in place right now we're not gonna fully tighten it same thing with the back is that screw now there we go oh, that one's gonna give us some problems for the back. 
Okay, not fully tightened, just enough to hold everything. And there we go. And that's our handle. Now you notice that the Elite Series gives us sort of a semi-gloss look. That's because of its more slick finish and lower drag coefficient and all that. Um, now we could easily change that with the uh, ratio of Cerakote to hardener. Um, it will always have sort of a little bit of a semi-gloss. Um, we could also give it a, a top coat of dead flat if we wanted to, um, but I'm happy with just the way it comes out. I mean, I use the Elite Series for a reason, so I'm not gonna mess with it. And then we have our clip. Now I put on this, uh, the coating on the clip, a little bit heavy, you can still see the butterfly in there, um, but yeah, a little heavier than it needs to be. I want to give it some extra protection against wear as it goes in and out of the pocket. But you can see we've still got nice action on the springs and the access lock. Um, look, I mean, it looks brand new. It looks like a brand new knife. Um, everything there looks crisp and clean. We are just waiting for the blade now, and we'll get that back in a day or so. Just to give you an idea of what it's going to look like with our pivot in. There's nothing to, to hold with the pivot right now. Um, it also is a D shape, not a circle, so we'll just fit that in and rotate it until we find that D in the frame and let it kind of slide in where it wants to slide in. So in order to get that guy seated there, okay, no, I thought we might have to actually screw it in to get him fully seated, but there we go. That's what the fully assembled handle is going to look like. <clears throat> Excuse me, now we're just waiting to get our blade back from its uh, reprofiling and refurbishment. Hey there, guys, gals, and llamas. Um, this is Dave, uh, filming a little bit of a video here for Doc. Uh, we're at here at, at my home, at my workbench, um, where you can see uh, this is my KME uh, sharpening system. Um, I acquired this several years ago uh, in a trade. Uh, actually, I, I paid for this part of it, but... Um, it was my first introduction to it. The gentleman was selling it and he said, you know, check it out. I checked out some videos and believe me, there are plenty of videos out on YouTube about this. Please do not take mine as gospel. Um, there's a lot of awesome YouTubers out there that have channels just absolutely full of videos on how to do the KME system very well. So if you decide to get into this, uh, look at those first or if you already have one, check them out because um, it's an awesome sharpening system. Um, I have gotten a lot of upgrades for it. So I have all the uh, diamond stones uh, from the 50 grit beast all the way up to the 1500 here. Um, they are awesome. As you can see, they're diamond. Uh, uh, boy, my, my brain works. Like, they're diamond um, encrusted. Um, and, and they, they just sit right in this carrier here. This is the carrier. Uh, I have an upgraded knob on it because all the knobs that come with the KME system uh, are like this. They're, they're this little thin knob with a with a, a nylon nut in it. And uh, it's just much easier to grab onto something like this or like this, uh, especially if you're going to be spending any kind of uh, lengthy time um, on these uh, sharpening. I have sharpened literally hundreds of knives on this system. Um, I love it to death. It, it, it has taken me from being able to um, only do micro bevels on, say, like a um, Spyderco uh, sharp station, uh, which is a great system, uh, to being able to do full-on um, mirror polish, uh, razor sharp, uh, hair popping, knives every time with balanced bevels etc it's a great system uh, we're going to see it in action here today um, hopefully doc will speed it up because it can be a little lengthy um, but you can you can hold the unit like this in your hand like this uh, there's a couple different things here this is this is a uh, what they call their uh, stone compensator 
I do have some Arkansas stones to go with this, and the Arkansas stones are a different size in width than the uh, diamond stones, or even these are kangaroo straps that have a diamond uh, emulsion on them. Uh, this one is four micron, and then I go down to a 1.5 micron, and that's how we get our uh, mirror polish edges. So what we do is we're going to take this, take a look at this benchmade here that Doc uh, has given us to sharpen, and you can see, um, I think you can see here, there's a little bit of a some spots where the where the blade has been chunked out, just ever so slightly. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to make that go away. And um, so what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to set this into the jaws here. So what you want to do is you want to you want to do a, a gentle clamp in there. And then we just take the Sharpie and we run it down the edge, just like that. And there are little charts that um, you can find if you, if you get into the KME system. Again, there's some great groups on uh, Facebook. So what you do is you clamp the blade in there and you get a nice initial tighten. And then what we do is we're gonna take our 1500, or no, I'm sorry, this is, yeah, the 1500 grit. And we're just gonna try to take away the, uh, the Sharpie and see where we're at on the edge. So here we are, we're, we can see that in this clamping, I'm hitting all the way down along the edge here in the belly, but I am coming up a little bit on the, um, on the, on the tip here. So what we can do, get my big fat head, is we have this chart, and again, you can find this in the, in the group, um, but it'll tell you, and you can pause here if you want, if you're coming up on the tip too much, then do you need to move the blade back into the uh, jaws a little bit? So what we'll do is we'll, we'll throw some fresh Sharpie on this side, just so we'll let that dry. And then we're gonna flip this over and we're going to see if that helped with our positioning here. So now we're getting, getting nice edge, edge, and edge up to the tip. Now this can be a very, uh, Disturbing sound for people at first. Now, I've spent a lot of time on the 50 on this, and normally I wouldn't, except for the damage on this blade. Again, the 50 is pretty aggressive. Um, and so, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the 50, unless you got blade damage. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the 100 grit. It's not bad. There's not just one spot. I just don't think we're going to get that in this, this go around without getting really aggressive. And Cut this out, Doc. So you can hear it's a toothy edge. It's very, okay. It's sharp. It's very sharp, but it's a toothy edge. I personally 
like to go for a finer edge. So wait till you see what we do to this. So now we're going to go to the four micron strop. And this is what separates the wheat from the chaff. Okay, now watch how this just shines up. And again, very carefully, what I'm doing is I'm stroking and pulling away. I never, ever want to push up with a strop. Whether you're doing it on this system, or you're just doing it on a uh, strop block, or whatever, you never, ever, 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 ever want to push your blade into the strop. So we're going to switch now to the 1.5 micron, even though this thing is pretty darn close to being done. Uh, because this is for Doc, and because I want to take this to its absolute pinnacle now you can see let me just bring it down under frame here this blade is super nice you can see that that glint on it again there is just a little bit of chunking out right there but that that bit out front is gone you can see on this side just a little little piece right there but now we take, oh wait, I did it wrong again. Yeah, what is going on? There it is. There it is. Got to approach it just right. See, now, unlike regular paper, there you go. When you do very light paper like this you have to you have to approach it just right or it's gonna it's gonna fold see like that you don't want that so you just want to be able to just see and that's where it's hitting that one spot but when I say this is hair popping sharp the proof Again, that's how you can identify a brother or a very hairy sister of the blade. Uh, this thing is smoking sharp now. After a lot of work on the, the G10 scales, the hardware, and of course the blade itself, which I think actually took the longest amount of work on this whole thing, um, we've got a totally reconditioned knife. Uh, originally, I think I, I said, you know, we we're going to restore it, which I guess gives the impression that we're going to return it to its original look. And so admittedly, I did a little bit different. I, I gave it um, a new look. But what I, I did kind of, and Dave, um, big time on that blade. If you see that shininess? We're going to zoom in on it in a minute. But we removed damage that was there. We reconditioned it. Um, and I did want to make it a one of a kind. So um, I, I guess it was restored and then it was, you know, modified a little bit. But if I zoom in, you can see the texturing on the G10 is all, you know, uh, the wear that we saw is gone. Um, we've got this color, by the way, is Cerakote Elite Series Foliage Green, which is a color that both the Air Force and the Army make a lot of uh, uniform items. And, well, they did up until the introduction of multicam. And there's still a fair amount, <clears throat> excuse me, of foliage green stuff floating around. Um, but this was um, in, in the days of the ACU and the ABU, this was a very common color of equipment, boots, um, clothing and stuff like that. So that's why I went with it. Um, and, and I, you know, I kind of really like it. And I thought that that color with, you know, an aviation kind of themed knife would be cool. Uh, stainless steel for all of the hardware, including the clip. And then look at that amazing mirror shiny edge that Dave put on this thing. 
and I really did edit down a lot of his part of the video not because it's not interesting um, but you know the patreon my patreon team gets an opportunity to watch that entire video um, I just this video was long enough and I just wanted to give you uh, an idea of, of the work he was doing to recondition this blade but I mean he did a lot of work and yeah see there's still that one little chip in the blade but the parts where he fully if we avoid that one area that's still chipped that was a deep chip so we'd have to take off a lot of blade material to get that out and you can just kind of see it right there right there um, but any 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 area where where that chip is not this thing is like I mean he showed you you know shaving his arm it's like a razor um, so this knife is back from the dead basically I mean it, it, it was in rough shape and it was cool because this is a discontinued model you can't get this anymore so I thank the viewer very I, I'm the reason I'm not mentioning the viewers names because he did not give me permission to use it in the video but he'll watch this and he'll know who he is thank you so much for sending this in for project for us I, I believe it was he found it it was found by him um, and this is really cool and so get in get in touch with me again after you see this um, if you want to reclaim this now that it's done um, or if you'd just like a cool prize from the the prize availability bucket I don't know what we're saying but uh, this is very cool this is a great opportunity just to show how we can take something that's really beat up and has seen better days and from point to butt uh, you know pommel I know I want to say butt we can really make a difference and make it look not only look really good again but make it function just like it should so the bench made aileron so anyway I hope you guys really enjoyed this um, it was a cool project to do it was a cool knife to get my hands on because you, know, you know they're hard to find now so um, thank you guys you are all absolutely awesome I appreciate every single one of you and I will be back again real soon.